Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. It's always a big game when high school hockey rivals take the ice, but this one means something more in the wake of a recent tragedy. Michigan's governor laying out an ambitious plan to reduce opioid deaths by half. He's accused of lighting a woman on fire. A monster. Just a monster. And tonight, that woman's family is relieved over what a judge decided in court today. William Helmer is the definition of a career criminal, and today a judge denied him bond on charges he set a woman on fire. The victim is a woman from Farmington Hills, described as an acquaintance of Helmer's. Today, the man U.S. Marshals tracked down and arrested appeared in court. Victor Williams live with an update on, Victor, a horrific case. Yeah, absolutely. I had the chance to talk to some of the victim's co-workers here at this Coney Island right here behind me. They tell me that they just can't get the picture and the image of this woman burning on the ground out of their minds, but at least they can sleep a little bit better knowing that this man is now behind bars. You have the right to be represented by an attorney during court proceedings. And if you could not afford to retain an attorney, counsel will be appointed in this case. William Gary Helmer appeared in court today emotionless, showing no remorse for what he allegedly did to 63-year-old Dorothy Spinella, setting her on fire. Monsters do that. Spinella's only child, Brian Morrissey, watched on as Helmer, who's also known as Rusty, said in a nonchalant manner, just waiting for the legal consequences of what he's accused of doing to be over. You want to wait the 21 days, Mr. Helmer? However, until his next court appearance, he'll remain locked in a cell. Due to concern for safety, the court orders a remand in this case. That was relieving. Yeah, I felt really good. The only thing we can do is just go through the entire justice system for him and hope that he never sees another light of day outside of, this, outside of the jail cell. Everybody just keeps sending prayers. And Helmer's next court appearance is going to be on December the 3rd. Of course, we'll have a camera there, and we will keep all of you guys updated on what happens then. Reporting live out here in Redford, Victor Williams, Local 4. And Victor, are we hearing how Dorothy is doing? Well, she's still in critical condition. She still has a long way to go until she's back to normal, of course. But at least I'm told by her son, Brian, that she's doing at least a little better. All right, Victor. More horror inside a high school. Two teens have died after a shooting at a Southern California school. Police say the 16 year old suspect opened fire in the quad of Saugus High School in Santa Clarita before school began this morning. He shot five students, then turned the gun on himself. The suspect survived and is in grave condition at the hospital. Two students, a 16 year old and 14 year old were killed. Three other students were hurt. Police are conducting interviews and searching the suspect's home to determine a motive. One of the biggest rivalries in high school sports, but tonight the hockey teams from Liggett and Gross Point South are gladly meeting on the ice, all to honor Logan and Briggs Connolly. Their deaths in a house fire have broken the collective heart of the Gross Point community. Mara McDonald is live at University Liggett tonight with more. Mara. Hi, Devin. You know it is standing room only inside the ice arena tonight, and with good reason. Let me take you inside. You'll notice the boys have on very special jerseys tonight instead of their usual varsity gear. Ghost Point South team will be, we got them jerseys to honor uh, Logan Conley because he played for Gross Point. And my Liggett boys will be wearing St. Clair Shores jerseys because Briggs played with the St. Clair Shores hockey league. A Gross Point South Liggett game is always a big rivalry game. Last varsity hockey matchup, the fire marshal said the rink was over capacity. Same thing tonight, but the teams come together on the ice to play for two little boys who lived and loved hockey. You will see two hockey sticks out in front of many Gross Point homes as a memorial to Logan and Briggs Connolly. The boys, 9 and 11, died in a house fire on October 28th. Tonight, a moment of silence before both teams play their first game of the season, a token of love and support for the Connolly family. Back here live, game is ongoing right now. We're going to head back inside. Uh, the boys' dad just arrived as they were doing the national anthem. We'll see if Mr. Connolly addresses the crowd tonight. We're live in Gross Point Woods at the University of Liggett. I'm Mara McDonald, yeah. Local 4. Sweet, sweet gestures all the way around. All right, Mara. 
A 72 year old man was in court today on charges related to a crime from 1984. Kenneth Dupree is accused of rape and murder in a case that was one of the first taken up by the University of Michigan's Innocent Project. Larry Spruill is live at 36th District Court with more. Larry, good evening. Good evening, Kimberly. The Inside this courtroom today, things were very emotional for the family of Michelle Jackson as she was murdered and raped back in 1984. Now, some of the family members heard those details for the first time. Others heard it again. I have to warn you, the details of this case may be hard to hear. Who killed 16 year old Michelle Jackson? It's been a question police have been trying to figure out since January 25th, 1984. At first they thought they had their man when police arrested Eddie Lloyd some years ago, but he was exonerated by the University of Michigan Innocence Project back in 2002. But now it's round two of this case. 72 year old Kenneth Dupree is facing charges of the rape and murder of 16 year old Michelle Jackson. Medical examiner report says she was strangled to death around the neck and she was sexually assaulted. A Detroit investigator said those details came from Dupree's mouth. The investigator read Dupree's statement. The girl was crying saying, let me go, leave me alone. I then, I'm sorry, I threw her down and I started taking her clothes off. Jackson's cousin remembers that day vividly. The first abandoned garage that I, that I came to, I, I went inside that garage. I saw Michelle. Police said Jackson was on her way to school when Dupree attacked her. 50 year veteran Sergeant David Babcock was there at the scene that day. The victim was laying on her back, as I said, but the thermals that may have been on there were appeared to be wrapped around her neck. And so Dupree is already in jail for another charge, and a judge says tonight he will remain in jail. He's due back in court on November 21st. We're live in downtown Detroit tonight. Larry Spruill, Local 4. All right, Larry, the opioid epidemic still affecting too many families in Michigan. Today, the state does have a new plan to try to fight back. Governor Whitmer unveiling the plan in Lansing today, focusing on three key areas, prevention, treatment, and harm reduction. Coco McAvoy shows us how the governor hopes to cut overdose deaths in half. In Lansing today, Governor Gretchen Whitmer announcing an ambitious plan to tackle the opioid crisis. Today I'm formally setting a goal for the state of Michigan uh, to reduce the number of opioid deaths by 50% in the next five years. Right now, the statistics are staggering. In 2017, five people each day died from opioids. This is a crisis that's hurting families in every community across Michigan. The state has a strategy to help combat the crisis, starting by improving access to treatment, expanding services, and educating doctors on how to safely prescribe. It should not be easier to get an opioid prescription than it is to access treatment. There will also be a media campaign addressing stigma. The media campaign, called autocorrect, will implement an animated graphic that replaces a stigmatizing word with a healing word. The campaign will aim to capture people's attention across the state, whether they use or know someone who does. We all have been affected by the, sub by the disease of substance use. No one is above or immune to the disease. But state leaders hope their efforts will help curb the crisis. We must rise to this challenge. And where I can act, I will do so swiftly and surely. And the governor created a task force in the summer to also help tackle this issue, and they'll be holding town halls in the coming months. Reporting live this evening, I'm Coco McAvoy, Local 4. Tonight, there is a confirmed case of whooping cough at Clawson High School. The school let Clawson parents know about the confirmed case in an email sent today. No other cases have been reported in the Clawson School District. Whooping cough is very contagious and can last for weeks or months. It can be very dangerous for babies and people with weakened immune systems. Two new challengers stepping up to run against Alyssa Slotkin for her seat in Congress. The first is Paul Young, a former Lansing news anchor, but also a prosecutor, has worked in Washington at the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Service. And then there's Christina Like, an attorney who owns a practice in East Lansing. Both candidates say they are running on conservative platforms.
All right, time now for a check of the national stories you'll see ahead at 6.30 on NBC Nightly News. Lester Holt standing by in New York with what's coming up tonight. Lester? Hey, Kim and Devin, tonight an NBC News exclusive, how surgeons used virtual reality to literally map out a groundbreaking operation to save a two-year-old. Also, like it or not, Instagram testing some changes aimed at taking the stress out of social media. Yeah, we've been hearing a lot more about mm -hmm. that lately. Instagram, I know, is doing this test after concerns about the mental health of young yeah. people. Yeah, they worry that, uh, you know, the, the number of likes a person get could affect their me mental health. Uh, but, of course, there's mixed reaction to this. We're going to have it all we see on Nightly News. Yeah. We're clicking on like on Lester Holt, no doubt, tonight at 630. <laughs> Thanks, Lester. Sure. We'll see you then. Uh, nice surprise for one local city. Meet the man who noticed a job that needed doing and got a bunch of friends together to get it done. Ben? Devin, our foray above freezing today didn't last long. We're going to be down in the mid-20s by midnight, but we do have 40s in sight. Tell you how long we'll have to wait coming up. And next, how a local family is making it clear they're not ready to forgive a priest who they say added more trauma to their son's funeral. Next. History has its heroes and villains, and sometimes one man is both. Shattered, season four, Hoffa. Available December 3rd, wherever you listen to podcasts. My birth certificate says Detroit. I love this city. There's so much diversity and culture. It is so amazing to see what a 